travel expenses for Computex paid for by ASRock. Thanks, ASRock. Be sure to check out our Computex coverage and live stream with ASRock. So thanks, ASRock, for sponsoring this video. And on with the Computex coverage, Computex 2024. So this chassis is using a 7900 XDX, but not just one, eight of them? There are, this is a gaming class GPU, why is this being used for AI? Ah, there's a little bit of a genius there between ASRock and Fison. So the first piece of magic here is that ASRock has designed a blower style uh, 7900 XT and a 7900 XTX, 20 gigs of VRAM and 24 gigs of VRAM. It uses the NVIDIA style 12 pin power connector and it's optimized for use in this kind of a rack configuration. But these cards aren't super loud and this breathes well. It turns out this is actually a vapor chamber design, a blower style cooler with a vapor chamber design. This might actually be my fantasy wish list 7900 XTX card. And so this is one of the most affordable AI solutions because these are not truly workstation class cards, but this is the 7900 XTWS from ASRock. They've got their software configured to split up the load across all of the GPUs, and you can see that the VRAM utilization is only about 74% for what's running on this across all eight, uh, all eight GPUs. This is a 220 billion parameter model that still manages about five tokens per second with the load spread across all of these GPUs. And this is the 7900 XT model, so each one of these is 20 gigabytes. The, uh, I think I heard during the press release that these were going to be priced very, very aggressively. So for a learning platform or a training platform, this will get it done. The other secret here is Fison software. So there are two terabyte Fison SSDs in here and Fison software will let you use those single level cell mode SSDs as extra VRAM. So even though you're limited to 20 gigs of VRAM on your, uh, your GPUs, if you run over that, you're still able to use the storage on the SSD like as if it's VRAM directly over PCIe. So it's pretty high bandwidth given that it's Gen 5 and it's also single level cell stuff, so it's a pretty interesting innovation from Fison, and we took a look at that previously. If the rack mount configuration is overkill, there is a desktop configuration with four GPUs. So you could run four 7900 XT or four 7900 XTX. This is also available with the Fison SSD option, so you can have two gigabytes of VRAM effectively through those Fison single level cell SSDs. You can do huge model training with either one of these systems because of the insane amounts of quote unquote VRAM. This is gonna make large language model training and, and well, just the ability to run it accessible to a lot more people because a single H100 will cost about $40,000. And you can probably get this whole platform. I mean, we don't know the pricing yet, but it's getting close. So this is really cool. Each one of these nodes is an AM4 or AM5 node. Yes, this same chassis will support both AM4 and, uh, AM4 and AM5 configurations. So this is a pretty good upgrade path. If you are with a hosting provider like uh, you know, DigitalOcean or Host Igniter and you get like, a dedicated AMD machine, I mean, they also have an Intel version, but if you get a dedicated AMD machine that's based around AM4 or 5, this is probably the type of chassis that it's running on. It's not really a desktop computer. This is a much more uh, reasonable solution for rack mount. And you can do redundant U.2 drives. You've got multiple connections for you know M.2, multiple options. You've got PCIe connectivity here. So you've got a lot of options. It's no secret that ASRock does a bunch of work on open compute standards and they're here in full force at the show. We've got Sienna and Milan based open compute chassis. So maximum density and built exactly to the open compute standards. These are designed for density. So you've got three nodes in a chassis here, three nodes in a one U configuration, three nodes in a two U configuration. But look at all the local storage and connectivity that you have. They've really crammed a ton in to each node on this platform. So this is ASRock's 4U4G TR5 2T Aqua. This is the chassis, the cooling solution, and the WRX90. This is a Threadripper Pro rack mount motherboard with lots of storage, lots of room for activities up here, but lots of room for business back here. So this would be an ideal pairing with workstation class GPUs or 
something that doesn't necessarily need to run absurdly loud. Standard ATX power supply, although you could use a modular ATX power supply for redundancy. And then you've got water cooling with a 360 millimeter radiator built right into this chassis from ASRock. AMD was refreshing their motherboards as well. The X870 Steel Legend Wi-Fi, the, the X870E was not on display, but USB 4 figures pretty heavily here. The motherboard configurations really aren't a lot different other than USB 4, other than making sure everything has the uh, easily removable M.2, but their port configuration here looks pretty good. Ryzen 9000, 8000, and 7000 series processor, so 8000, of course, is the G series. Now, did you notice that the ASRock Aqua motherboard was all Type-C on the rear I.O.? It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. ASRock is also showing off their full line of OLED monitors, the flagship 4K 240Hz or 1080p 480Hz. You can configure that on the OSD. Two DisplayPort 1.4 inputs with DisplayStream compression support, of course, which will work through Level 1 Tax KVMs and also HDMI, so you can hook this up for uh, to your console. So two HDMI, two DisplayPort uh, 1.4 with display stream compression, plus USB Type-C with 65 watt charging. And so it does have a built-in KVM function, it does have a bunch of other neat uh, built-in functions for the OSD, but the OSD is not quite final yet on this monitor, but uh, it does have a lot of features. And then up here, you can do 2560 by 1440, the ones on display are all 2560 by 1440, except for this one, which is 4K, true 4K. I cannot, I need, I need this in my lab. This is the monitor I've been waiting for because OLED has always been tricky and converting a TV, an OLED TV into a computer monitor, there are downsides of doing that. And some of the other OLED panels we've tested, there are some gotchas and also they're not 4K. And, but you know, the LG 4K is like $3,000. And so hopefully this is not gonna be $3,000 but this is more gamer oriented, laptop oriented, and it looks like it ticks all of the boxes on paper. Now, it's hard to see, but the OLED are also gonna have different finish options. You can have matte or gloss, depending on what your particular preference is. Now, ASRock's still leaning pretty hard into their Phantom Gaming IPS monitor line as well. They have curved and not curved and ultra wide screen, but they also added a little tiny OLED screen on the stand. So you can see stats in your game or that's about your computer, if it's overheating or, or whatever. And that is on the ASRock PG34 QR T3A, 34 inch, 3440 by 1440, 180 hertz refresh. So this is the panel that ASRock was showing in the press conference, 520 hertz, but this is an IPS type panel. Now obviously 520 hertz in an IPS context is not the same as 420 hertz in an OLED context, like the OLED is gonna be faster but this is still really absurdly fast for IPS and it has really good motion clarity at those higher refresh rates, at least from the demo that was running earlier.